Hey party people, Jay here with Carpe Pluma. Gonna be talking to you today about the Platinum 3776 Century. I've got a couple versions here. I've got the black with gold trim. I've got the Borgonia model. We're gonna be spending a little bit of time with both, so let's get into it. Here are five things you may not know about the Platinum 3776 Century. Number one, what's in a name? Well, the 3776 comes from the height of the tallest mountain in Japan, that being Mount Fuji. Uh, this is reminiscent of the 4810 that appears on many Mont Blanc nibs. However, if you saw my video on the Mont Blanc Meisterstück, you know that that 4810 is not quite accurate in terms of Mont Blanc's height. Uh, they did a better job over at Platinum. 3,776 meters does appear to be the height of Mount Fuji, according to my research. So way to go. Gold star to the Japanese. You are better at measuring than those Germans are. Um, as for the century part of the name, that comes from the fact that the company was founded in 1919 and upon the release of this pen they were coming up on being in business for a century. They wanted to commemorate that fact. Hence the Platinum 3776 Century. Number two. At age 29, Toshiya Nakata left his previous job and took the reins of Platinum from his late father. Uh, this was in 2009. Now, Nakata started out his work by doing a lot of research with customers, and he kept on hearing the same story over and over again. Uh, that being that they would start reminiscing about the glory days of fountain pens in the 60s and would talk about how they were gifted a nice fountain pen and some landmark occasion in their life, whether it be a graduation from high school or college, a wedding, some something some special occasion uh, now since this was a gift and a special gift they didn't consider it an everyday carry item so they would use it they would put it away and invariably the pen would dry out as fountain pens are wont to do uh, when they're left and not used now this would leave a bad impression uh, and more often than not the person would then just put the pen away uh, go back to using their ball points or whatever else uh, and just keep the pen as a keepsake no longer using it as a pen uh, this motivated Nakata to invent the revolutionary, well, revolutionary, revolutionary, they call it revolutionary, I call it pretty cool, I don't know if it's revolutionary, but anyway, get to the point, this uh, caused Nakata to invent the slip and seal mechanism. Uh, what that basically is, is sort of a little cap inside of the cap. Um, now, if you can see in there, there's a plastic ring that comes down around the nib and up top here you can see a little spring around the top of the plastic. Basically how it works is that when you screw the pen in, the last quarter turn or so is going to put pressure on that plastic and create a nice tight seal between the section and the plastic inner cap. Um, now, Platinum claims that you can ink a pen, leave it for up to two years, and it will not go dry on you. I have not tested this. I don't have two years to test it, and I use this pen way too often for that. But that's what the promotional material says, so take it for what it's worth. I can tell you the pen does not have any hard starts. Uh, it's never dried out on me, so A plus to the slip and seal mechanism. It's pretty cool. Maintenant, pour le troisième, c'est bien l'inspiration de la France. Now, for number three, we have inspiration from France. Uh, apparently, the folks over at Platinum are very enamored with their French counterparts as they named several of their models of this new 3776 uh, after French landmarks or icons or what have you. Uh, there's the Chartres Bleu, uh, named for the Chartres Cathedral. There's the Chenonceau White, named for the Chateau de Chenonceau. There's the Bourgogne, uh, which I've got here, which has got that lovely burgundy color, uh, reminiscent of the wine of the burgundy region. And then there is the Nice, which is meant to evoke the sandy beaches of Nice. Now, I don't want you to think that Japan is hating on Japan. Uh, they do love France, but they're also representing their home turf as they named their limited editions of this pen after the five lakes that surround Mount Fuji. Number four. In the design and engineering of this pen, Platinum analyzed over 40,000 handwriting samples from customers through their subsidiary, the Nakaya Corporation. Now, if that wasn't interesting enough, I learned in my research that apparently Nakaya is the place where old Platinum craftsmen go to ride off into the sunset. Uh, according to their website, all of their craftsmen have over 40 years of experience working at Platinum, um, so you can count on getting a good pen from them. Anyone that's been doing something for 40 years, they 
probably got it figured out by that point. Uh, it used to be they were only available through mail order. Now they're online. So if you want, you can Google them, N-A-K-A-Y-A. -A -A. Uh, warning though, it is not going to be cheap. Number five. The 3776 was made available to the public in 1978, and within its first six months, it sold over 150,000 units. Uh, since that day, it has continued to have great popularity. Uh, it also won the Japanese Good Design Prize from the Japanese government in 1978. Uh, so you can know that this is a good, road-tested pen. It's been around. It stood the test of time. Uh, there you go. Now it's time for the anatomy of a pen, where we take a look at the pen from top to bottom, from finial to end cap. So let's get going with the anatomy of a pen. Uh, we're gonna be taking a look at the burgundy model, the Borgonia, um, just cause it's a little bit more striking to my eye than the plain black is. Um, we'll start at the top where the finial would be if this had a finial. However, you can see it's just got a rounded top made of the same uh, burgundy colored resin as the body and cap of the pen. Um, as we move down the cap, we've got a nice uh, gold plated band that goes all the way around that is welded to the clip. Um, the clip is a little bit thicker to my eye than the average clip. Um, so maybe you like that, maybe you don't. Um, the clip is medium stiff. Most clips of this style are incredibly stiff. For some people, too stiff to use. I tend to prefer a stiff clip. I like the durability over the ease of use. This kind of seems to have the best of both worlds, though. There's no spring-loaded action in there. There's no screws or no attachments where things are going to break apart. Looks like it's all welded together, yet it is nice and springy. Uh, so that's a nice feature. Um, as we move down the cap, we've got more of that translucent resin, which gives way to a thin gold band, uh, then a stripe of burgundy, and then a thick gold band. Now, uh, if you want to take a look at the band there, you can see that it says uh, platinum is engraved on there. And then we've got 3776. And then on the other side, made in Japan. Uh, the engraving is nice. It doesn't make or break the pen by any means, um, but it's well done. Looks nice and clean, um, so no complaints there. Uh, then we've got about a half a centimeter more of the resin, which gives way to the body of the pen. Now, uh, the body of the pen tapers down in the traditional cigar shape. You can see that there's another gold band down there at the bottom, uh, and then the end cap, pretty simple, just a rounded end cap. Uh, like the top of the pen. Now, uh, one thing about this material is from a distance you can see it's pretty opaque. Um, doesn't exactly look like a demonstrator, but if, if I hold it up close here, you can kind of see there's something going on in there. And if I put a light behind it, you can definitely see there's something going on in there. Uh, you can see the nib, you can see the slip and seal mechanism, which I'm going to get to in a bit when I take the cap off. Um, but it's really a nice, nice material, uh, nice warm resin, beautiful color, uh, so thumbs up there. Uh, if I take the cap off here, give you a look at the slip and seal mechanism. Uh, I don't know if you can see or not, but at about this point right here, about where my finger goes across, is where the slip and seal mechanism comes down to. It's sort of a cap within a cap. Um, up here at the top, we've got a spring, which you can perhaps see. Um, but as I put the pen in there, the section comes into contact with the bottom of the slip and seal mechanism. And as I turn this, about the last quarter turn or so, puts pressure on that slip and seal mechanism, which is spring-loaded, and creates a nice tight seal inside the cap around the nib. Um, so that supposedly you can leave the pen for up to two years and it won't go dry on you. Now, if we want to take a look at the nib, let's see, it says... We can get you a good look at it. It says 3776, then a P for platinum. Next, we've got 14K, then a B for broad, and finally 585, which is the hallmark for 14 karat gold, 58.5%. Uh, we've also got some styling up around the top of the nib, sort of outlining the shape of the nib. Uh, it is a single tone nib, though, so it's not, not particularly fancy, uh, but very functional. Um, and it looks nice enough. Uh, the feed is pretty standard, nothing too much to look at there, but give you a look at it. 
As for the section, you can see it's sort of a tapered cylindrical shape. There doesn't seem to be any hourglass shape to it. Um, one nice thing about it though is it is that nice color resin. Uh, so many pens, um, even in a higher price range than this, will have a beautiful body and then just have a plain black section. They continued the resin on up into the section, which is a nice touch, I think. Um, the section does have a little bit of a lip up near the nib, uh, sort of like the Mont Blanc Messerstück does. Um, some people don't like that feature. It can be uncomfortable for them. I definitely like it. My hands can be a little bit on the sweaty side at times, uh, and this just gives me a more secure grip on the pen for long writing, se long writing sessions. Um, as we move down the section, we've got a gold band here that gives way to the threads. Uh, the threads are, I would say, medium sharp. Uh, they don't bother me a bit, but if you're very sensitive, to that type of thing and if you hold your pen high it could be the case that this pen might be a little bit uncomfortable for you because there is a bit of a jump from the section up to the threads and then from the threads up to the body of the pen so if you hold your pen very high um, and you're writing for a long period of time it's possible you could develop a blister or something I don't really know like I said uh, not an issue for me but take that for what it's worth now if we take the body off of the pen and take a look at the guts. You can see that the section does have metal threads connecting to the body, so the pen is not eyedropperable. I don't know how well that would have worked um, with this end cap on here. You, you know, you could have sealed that up with some glue or something, but the point is moot because you've got metal sec or metal threads on the section. Um, it does take a proprietary platinum converter. Um, but the converter does come with the pen. I don't love proprietary converters in general, you know, if this breaks or if I lose it or just if I need to lend a converter to somebody, whatever. It's nice to have the standard international converter. Um, so I don't love the proprietary part of it, but it does seem like it's well made, feels solid, uh, haven't had any issues with it, and it does fit in there quite securely, and it comes free with the pen, so no complaints. So let me pop this back on here. Pop this cap on here, give you one more look at the pen as a whole, and we will move on. That is the anatomy of a pen. Next, I'm gonna be ranking the pen on three categories, on looks, on feel, on bang for your buck. Now, it is a four-star rating system. I do have a little twist on it. If you're not familiar with my system, you want an explanation, you can check out this link here. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory, though, so no need to go running off. Uh, you'll probably catch on as we go. Um, so, what kind of rating do I give this pen? Um, like the Mont Blanc Meisterstück, I can see how some people would give this a Wilma, that being a two out of four stars. It's not a flashy pen, um, and some might say it's a bit of a boring pen, depending on what you're into. Now, that is more true for this black, um, which doesn't have that nice resin, uh, but even this black, I will say uh, what I said about the Mont Blanc Meisterstück, and that is that this pen, while it might appear boring to some, to me it appears sleek, it appears elegant, it appears timeless. Um, this is the little black dress or the black tie of the pen world. Uh, it's the type of pen that you can use anywhere. Um, you could take this out at a funeral and no one is going to think that you're trying to be flashy, you can take it out in the boardroom, you can take it out in the classroom, uh, wherever you go, this pen would be appropriate. Now, uh, this black pen, I would probably give a Wilma and a half a Leela, uh, which would be a two and a half out of four stars. Uh, I do like the wider clip, I do like the engraving on the band, uh, I like the elegant styling, the cigar shape, uh, it's just generally pretty sleek, uh, sleek and timeless. Now this red, on the other hand, this burgundy or Borgonia, um, I would give a straight up Leela, a straight up three out of four stars, just because this resin is so arresting. Um, this is kind of like the Visconti Divina Elegance in that you've got to see it in person to really get an idea of how nice this resin is. Uh, but like to me, you know, the fact that it doesn't have a finial, to me it just looks like there's a ruby kind of perched on top of the pen there. And it looks like the entire pen is kind of made of like a stained glass. Um, it's just a very nice looking pen. I like the fact that you can see into it if you want to. Uh, demonstrators can look a little bit chintzy to me. 
Um, this definitely does not have that look as it's opaque from a distance, but if you get up close, you can see in there. So I would say for the black, uh, which doesn't have that kind of flash of the color, I would give it a two and a half, that being a Wilma and half a Leela. Um, but for the, the Borgonia, or for that matter, the Chenonso, the Chartres, or the Nice, um, none of which I have seen in person, I've only seen them online, but they all look nice, especially the Chartres Bleu. Um, it appears to have the same sort of deep, rich color to it, along with that translucent nature, which is not easy to pull off in a material. Um, but those are all going to get a three out of four stars, a Taronga Lila. Um, so, final score, three out of four. Right, next we're going to be taking a look at feel. Uh, now, this pen is a golden imp pen. Uh, it is a little bit on the stiff side. So if you like a very springy nib, uh, you're not going to find that here. Um, it is springier than a steel nib, certainly, but for a gold nib, it's a bit on the stiff side. So keep that in mind. Um, another thing to think about with the feel is that there is a slight jump from the section up to the threads and then from the threads up to the body of the pen. So if you hold your pen high, that could be an issue. Not an issue for me, but it could be for some people. Um, finally, the third thing that I'll say about the feel of this pen is that it is a little bit light in the hand. Um, don't expect to have a big, weighty feeling pen. Uh, now, with that said, I will also say that this definitely does not feel like a cheap pen. A lot of pens that are light feel cheap to me, um, but this definitely feels like a quality pen. I don't know if it's just a placebo effect of you know, the, the stunning nature of the resin or just the fact that it writes so well. Uh, but to me, it absolutely does not feel like a cheap pen. It does feel a little bit on the light side. Um, if that's a problem for you, if you, if you prefer a heavier pen, but you've still got your eye on this, uh, you should use this pen posted. It posts incredibly well. It is actually pretty darn well balanced in the posted position. You can feel it is very slightly back heavy which is unavoidable in a posted pen, but compared to a lot of pens, uh, it is very well balanced in the posted position. So, what kind of a score do I give it on feel? Uh, not gonna be a Kirk Van Hooten or a Drake, one or two stars. Definitely better than that. Um, I gave the Mont Blanc Meisterstück a Nina Simone, four out of four, feeling good, and this doesn't quite get there, which leaves only James Brown, three out of four stars, I feel good. Um, now the reason why it doesn't quite reach that Mont Blanc level is, number one, uh, the, the nib just isn't quite as smooth. Uh, the Mont Blanc has got a buttery smooth nib. This has got a little bit more feedback. The nib is a little bit stiffer and the pen is a little bit lighter in the hand. So it tends to, I, I don't know if this word necessarily applies, but it seems right to me. This pen doesn't seem to have the gravitas of a Mont Blanc. It doesn't have quite the weight in the hand. It doesn't feel quite as serious. Um, so still a very nice writer and really with all of those negative things I said, I'm leaving out the fact that this is one of my favorite writers to use. After my Mont Blanc, this would probably be my Desert Island pen, just in terms of a pen that I can write with forever and ever. Um, when I think about it, I really enjoy it. When I don't think about it, I forget about it and I just keep going. Never gets in the way, uh, never hard starts, never skips. Uh, that's another thing to, to keep in mind. Um, I incorporate how a pen writes into the feel and hard starts just annoy, annoy the bejesus out of me. Um, and this pen definitely avoids those. So uh, final score is gonna be a three out of four. James Brown, I feel good. Uh, there you go. Finally, we have bang for the buck. Um, now this is a little problematic because there are two very different prices you could pay for this pen. Um, this is a Japanese pen, and if you buy a lot of pens, you may know that uh, in the American market, there is a huge markup on Japanese pens. I don't know if it's taxes or tariffs or just something with the import-export law. I'm, I'm not an economics guy, that's not my forte. Um, but it's my understanding that any pen that you buy from Japan is gonna be hugely marked up if you buy it from an American retailer. Um, this is not their choice. It's not like they just think we should pay more. Uh, they need to mark things up or they'll take a huge hit. So, with that said, uh, how much does this pen cost in Japan? Um, in Japan, 
you can get this pen for approximately 75 US dollars. Uh, of course, you would have to pay in yen, um, but you can buy it on eBay from a Japanese seller and pay, you know, 75 US dollars and then maybe 12 or 15 dollars for sh shipping, um, and it comes out to be a relatively cheap pen under 100 bucks. Uh, the problem with that is that you do have to wait two or three weeks at least for it to arrive from Japan. Um, you're not going to get near the customer service that you would get at a place like uh, Goulet, you know, for example. They have a ton of value added to their products. Um, they put out the videos, uh, which I really enjoy. Uh, they have great customer service. Um, so if you feel like supporting an American company, if you're American, of course, if you're from somewhere else in the world, you know, do what you got to do. I don't expect you to cater to American interests. Uh, but if you're American and you feel guilty about going around those tariffs or taxes, then you're going to pay closer to $175 to $200 for this pen. Uh, now, that is still not a bad deal. Uh, it writes very nicely. It's a gold nib. Uh, it's got a really striking look to it. Um, it's a nice, a nice light feel without feeling cheap. Uh, so that is by no means a ripoff. Um, as far as that goes, not every model is going to be very easy to find from a Japanese seller on eBay. Um, I know that that's, that's how I got this one. I got this Borgonia model from eBay, paid about 75 bucks for it. I believe I also saw the Chartres Blue and the Black on eBay, uh, but I could not find the Shunanso or the, uh, or the Nice, uh, any of the Nice models on eBay. So if you're partial to those models, you'll probably have to go through the American retailer and pay the full price. Uh, but, you know, I don't know. I feel like a jerk telling you to go around the tariffs and the taxes, um, but speaking for myself personally, if I were to get this from an American retailer, it would be a two out of four stars, a Molotov cocktail and bang for your buck. Um, now, if I didn't know about that Japanese price, this might have a higher score from the American retailer. Now that might seem counterintuitive, but I think it's just kind of a knee jerk gut reaction knowing that I could get it cheaper somewhere else, I just kind of feel like I'm being cheated or being fleeced uh, if I'm paying twice as much for it, even if it's not going to the actual retailer, it's going to the government or to whoever else. I don't know, it just feels weird to me. Um, so I got mine from Japan. I felt a little guilty about it, but I've got a bit of an outlaw streak, I suppose. Um, and so it didn't really bother me that much. I still slept fine at night. Um, so if you pay $75 for this pen, it is absolutely four out of four a neutrino bomb. Um, it's like I said, the gold nib, the color, the way it writes, the way it feels, all makes for a very nice pen uh, that, you know, people, a lot of people do pay 175 to 200 bucks for. So if you can get it for less than half of that, um, you're getting great bang for your buck. So depending on how you feel about going around tariffs and taxes, how you feel about supporting American businesses, how you feel about waiting an extra two or three weeks for shipping, how you feel about potentially not having customer service. I mean, if you order this on eBay and it comes with a sprung nib, good luck trying to send it back to Japan, uh, dealing with the language barrier, waiting for the pen to come to you again. You know, it might be a month, month and a half till you finally get your pen. That could be frustrating for some people. Uh, so depending on all that, you're either gonna pay $75 and for that, you get the neutrino bomb, four out of four stars, or you're gonna pay 175 to $200. For that, you get the Molotov cocktail, two out of four stars. All right, finally, should I buy this pen, yes or no? Should I carpe pluma, should I seize the pen? Uh, I absolutely say buy this pen. Even if you uh, feel compelled to pay the higher price, to me, this is still a good pen worth having. Uh, it rates very well. It's a little bit on the stiff side, um, but for me personally, as I mentioned in my video on the Visconti Divina Elegance, I prefer to have a little variation in the feel of my pens. If every pen that I have felt exactly the same to me, I would get a little bit bored. I like to keep a few different ones inked, some lighter ones, some heavier ones, some broad nibs, some fine nibs, uh, etc. And if you're like that, then this is a nice light pen that still feels very good in the hand does not feel cheap at all. Um, and the material that it's made of, 
you know, if you're if you're not a flashy person, but you still appreciate a nice, beautiful piece of craftsmanship, then this is a good pen for you because this isn't ostentatious by any means, but it is beautiful. Uh, so I say absolutely, Carpe Pluma, seize the pen, whatever price you're going to pay. Uh, once you've come to terms with that, you're going to be happy with the pen you get. Uh, so that's going to be all for me. I'm Jay from Carpe Pluma. I would love it if you would like, comment, subscribe below. I'm going to get you a writing sample double quick, and I will see you all later. All right, bye for now. All right, party people, Jay from Carpe Pluma back with the Borgonia Platinum 3776 Century. Uh, I'm going to do a little writing sample for you here. So let's get going. We've got the Platinum. 3776 century. It's the Borgonia model. We're using a gold nib. Well, it comes standard with a gold nib, uh, but this is a broad, if you can believe it. Um, it is a Japanese broad, and like most Japanese broad nibs, it runs a little bit on the finer side than the European, uh, but you can see it for yourself here, so this is what you're going to get. This is what the broad looks like. Uh, we are using Monteverde Midnight Black Ink. And we are writing on HP 32 pound laser jet premium choice paper. Now, I don't know if you noticed, it looked like the piece skipped a little bit there. That was not a skip. That was me getting my pen turned a little bit sideways. So I promise I will tell you if this pen skips. I'm very straightforward about that. Um, all right, how about a little bit of figure eights? You know, you can really tell on the figure eights, uh, it's very smooth, it's got a little bit of feedback, not scratchy at all, but a little feedback, uh, and a little bit on the stiff side. Um, I've already said all that, but I'm just being reminded of it as I write here. Um, how about a little bit of backwards writing? Now this is incredibly smooth for a backwards writer. Uh, honestly, this feels like a lot of fine pens feel writing, writing front ways. Uh, that is going to be a very useful feature on this pen. Um, if you've got you know paper that bleeds through easily, or for whatever reason you just need to write smaller, uh, you basically have two pens in one here. I mean this is that's that's it just it feels like a fine nib when I turn it around backwards, um, and then needless to say on the other side. Uh, it goes right back to writing great. Uh, so A plus on the backwards writing for sure. All right, how about a little bit of cursive? The quick brown fox jumps dot 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 over the lazy dog. Uh, cursive feels good, curves feel good, it feels nice and flowy. Uh, no complaints there. How about a line thickness test? Uh, if I just put a line across here with no pressure and then right next to it with a little bit of pressure, uh, you can see there is some variation there, uh, but not very much. For a gold nib, it's not super springy. Uh, so if you really, if you're into flex nibs, if you like your, your gold nibs to have a lot of flex in them, you know, this may not be the pen for you, but you can see right there what you can get. Uh, Finally, let's have a wetness test. Uh, one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand, five, one thousand, six, one thousand, seven, one thousand, eight, one thousand, nine, one thousand, ten, one thousand, eleven, one thousand, twelve, one thousand, thirteen, one thousand, fourteen, one thousand, fifteen, one thousand. All right, so uh, not too much on that last one, but definitely on the wet side. Uh, let's do an immediate one here. Yeah, this is going to be definitely going to be a wet pen. If I just write Carpe Pluma. Yeah, I mean, if you're a left-handed writer and you're counting on being able to drag your hand across a page, it's probably not going to work out so well for you. Um, 
but you know I'm sure you've got your overhand or underhand technique or whatever you got going on. So that is going to be our writing sample for the Platinum 3776 Century. I uh, hope you all enjoyed the video. Would love if you like, comment, subscribe below. That's going to be all for me. I'll see you all later. Bye for now.